This year's Nobel Prize for Medicine has been awarded for genetic research on human evolution. Swedish scientist Svante Pebel is known for sequencing the genome of the Neanderthal, an ancestor of us modern humans. He also discovered the Denisova, another extinct human in species. He showed that both contributed genes that still exist in modern humans. DNA holds the code. Now, that announcement was made half an hour ago. I'm now joined by our senior science correspondent, Derek Williams. Uh, Derek, uh, this Nobel Prize for, for Svante Pebble, it does come as a surprise, does it not? It, it, it does kind of come a little bit of, out of left field. Now, there's no way to really predict Nobel, the Nobel Prizes. I've been trying to do it for 15 years, and, and I've had actually very scant success. Um, but in general, you can say sort of they tend to, for example, alternate between um, basic fundamental research into, into biology or into physiology. So things like last year, we had one on, on how cells uh, perceive stimulus and, and transmit that information to our brain. So basic fundamental research. And generally, they, they then go the next year or the year after to something that has a clear impact on healthcare. Now, this is for a field called evolutionary anthropology. So it's a, it's a, it's a completely distinct field that actually has very little to do with, with human health care and much more to do with fundamental research for the second year in a row now. Now, uh, tell us more about the science uh, uh, that Svante Pewa did. Well, basically, back in the, he, his, his research began back in the 90s when we began to do inter, looking at the genome, the human genome research, when we began to be able to, 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 to genomically sequence our own DNA. And, and his idea was, how do, does our DNA, what does our DNA look like when compared to that of our extinct closest evolutionary cousins? Mm -hmm. And um, so he began to look into ways of actually isolating and sequencing genomes of Neanderthals and, and, and Denisovans and, and, and other extinct hominin groups that are close relatives and comparing those then to human DNA to see how we are the same, genetically speaking, and, and in which ways we were different. Well, how do we profit from that, from knowing that? Well, ultimately, you also have to think there's, there's going to be reasons why those species went extinct. It's, it's, it's really human knowledge about, about why did we, Homo sapiens sapiens, become the dominant hominin species on this planet? Um, are there, gen are there genetic reasons for it? If so, what are those genetic reasons? It's about finding out about our own past, but also this genetic information could also have a distant impact on healthcare in, in terms of telling us why those differences could then actually tell us more about why we survived and they didn't. Mm. What impact will this uh, research have on the scientist, or the surprise have on the scientist who receives it? Well, I think that, I mean, as I said, it come, it, I, I'm, I'm sure that he is very, very surprised. Um, mm. I, I, most scientists There's are. There's no shortlist, is there? No, there is no shortlist. There is no shortlist. Or, and and the, the debates that go on are only actually freed up 50 years later. So nobody even knows who came in for discussion. Um, actually, I think this year, everybody was expecting it to go for messenger RNA yeah. vaccines. But uh, so this is coming really from, from nowhere. It wasn't on any of the shortlists that I read. That's for sure. Oh. Good job on reading up on all this in just half an hour. Thank you very much, Derek Williams there, our senior science correspondent.